Hello Hard Video Order Stuff, welcome back good buddies and today for you I've got another super quick and helpful video. I'm going to show you my tips and tricks for getting sharper, more detailed looking video with ease and I'll show you how I went from this to this. The first thing that makes a big difference, fairly obviously, is resolution. 4K footage will in theory look four times sharper than regular HD. So it makes sense to use your camera's maximum resolution even if you're delivering in HD. Yes, there are good reasons for doing that, but that's a subject for another video. HD versus 4K? Let's see exactly what the difference looks like. Do bear in mind that sharp footage isn't the be all end all, and very often videographers like a certain softness to their footage because, well, life isn't sharp. Anyway, here's our first clip shot in HD and I'm using the Sigma 50mm art lens at f2.8. Switching to 4K, I doubt you'll notice any major difference if you're watching on a mobile device, but on any screen, iPad size or larger, I suspect it'll be noticeably more detailed. And then when we zoom in to 200 and then 400%, you'll see a huge difference in detail. However, you could have all the resolution in the world, but it would be completely pointless without nice sharp lenses to resolve that resolution. Modern lenses are usually all pretty sharp, whilst older lenses can be softer, and the difference can be much less subtle than you might guess. This was shot with my Helios 58mm lens, which was made in 1984, so very, very vintage. And compared to a modern lens, in this case a Sigma 50mm art, you can see a noticeable difference in contrast, detail and colour rendition. Zooming in to 200 and then 400% we can see a massive difference in detail. Of course these were both shot in 4K and with apertures as similar as possible. If you have lenses that are quite sharp, of course you can squeeze a little bit more sharpness out of them by not using them at their absolute widest apertures. It's good to know the sweet spot of your lenses. For most it will be somewhere between f2.8 and f8. But look yours up as it really depends on the lens. But you could usually bank on the extremes of your lens's aperture range, um, open and close fully being less sharp. Let me demonstrate. In this clip I'm using the Sigma 50mm art once again fully open at f1.4 aperture. This possibly wasn't the best choice of lens because the Sigma art series are notoriously sharp, even with wide open apertures. However, I am still convinced that we'll see a sizable difference when we compare it to f4. And I was relieved when I first checked out this footage because yes, we have to ignore the huge difference in background blur, but there is a sizable difference in detail. It's pretty accepted that lenses aren't at their sharpest when their apertures are wide open, but on top of that, lenses like this, which have huge f1.4 apertures, we're dealing with tiny depth of fields, and that's not going to help anything if we're trying to get really detailed looking footage. Have you ever heard the phrase, a bright pixel is a sharp pixel? I know, not the most catchy of photography sayings, but there is merit to it. The theory being that if you've exposed properly, you'll get a sharper looking image. And I can't argue with that logic. This clip, quite unfairly, I have intentionally underexposed. I've boosted it a bit with ISO in the camera and I've brought the exposure up a little bit in post. This is going to mean reduced dynamic range and grainy looking footage. Let's compare to really well exposed footage now. Of course we've got clean looking footage with better colour and better dynamic range because it's been exposed properly. Side by side we can see noticeable difference in dynamic range and when we zoom in even closer we can see that it really does affect our detail. And there we go, a bright pixel is indeed a sharp pixel. Adding sharp Opening to your footage in camera is generally considered a no-no in the videography world. The theory being that if you add sharpening in body, you can't really subtract it later. However, I filmed a video a while back about this, it's linked below if you're interested, and I found that the in-body sharpening that's available in the Sony Alpha cameras is actually very subtle and because of that I actually don't usually have the sharpening set to the minimum. I quite like it. So here it is with the detail set to minus 7 all the way down and of course no sharpening added in editing. And here it is with the detail set all the way up in camera and it's probably a little bit brittle looking for my taste but it is surprisingly delicate for in camera sharpening. Side by side and you can definitely see a difference and I, I do find that with the sharpened example I do miss the softer look of having it turned off in camera. 
Of course, if you prefer to leave your in-camera sharpening at its minimum, and then just add a little later in editing if your footage needs it, you're in luck because sharpening software is just getting better and better. My favorite by quite a bit is the sharpening plugin made by SCPFX. It's amazing value and the results are pretty jaw dropping. Here we are again and our footage has the detail in camera set to its minimum. I'm then gonna turn on the sharpening plugin and all I'm gonna do is add a tiny, tiny bit of sharpening and I'm going to boost the sharpening of just the highlight areas. How cool is that? Side by side, we can see that this boosts the sharpness of any kind of specular highlights. And that means that it leaves the shadows and midtones alone, which is where our skin tones are. And that's great. Such a cool plugin. I will never go back to a stock sharpening plugin. And finally, just look what happens when I combine all the things I've mentioned and compare the results. An old lens at its widest aperture, shot in HD, slightly underexposed, and with all the sharpening turned off, versus a modern and particularly sharp lens at its optimum aperture, shot in 4K, exposed nice and brightly, and with a bit of sharpening. Not fair at all, of course, but hey, it's fun. Well, here we are, a vintage lens, HD, slightly underexposed, shot wide open, and no sharpening applied in editing. Versus a modern lens, correctly exposed, shot in 4K, stopped down a little bit just for extra sharpness and with a tiny bit of sharpening applied in editing. What a difference you can see when looking at them side by side. I kind of was expecting this, but wow. The example on the right is of course quite a lot sharper than you would actually need it to be, but as an exercise, I found this really, really interesting to do. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've made a huge amount of videos like this, so I'll pop a couple of particularly good ones on this side. And if you fancy sticking around for a bit longer and you're not already subscribed, definitely do it. Hit the blob that's over, just over my shoulder here, and until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys.